Alright, welcome back everyone. So a couple weeks ago I made a geometry node tutorial and in that tutorial I featured this material that you see here and a few people were asking how I achieved the material. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of the material setup. What we have here is a principal BSDF node and we have a bluish kind of purple base cutter. We have a cutter ramp that's being controlled by a noise texture. So for the cutter ramp, I kind of want it to dictate the areas that are going to be affected by the subsurface. This way, whatever is black will not be affected by the subsurface scattering and will appear opaque. And whatever is shooting towards the grays and the white values will be affected by the subsurface scattering. So if you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can go ahead and shift control left click on any given node and it'll give you a preview of how that node is affecting your overall node tree. So here you can see that these black areas on the model, those areas are opaque and anything else that's not black is what's being affected either more or less by subsurface scattering. So if I go ahead and shift control left click on my principal BSDF, you'll see here as I'm rotating around the render preview as it's calculating, you can see what areas are opaque. And it's those bluish areas that are showing the actual base color of the model. And then as it calculates the subsurface scattering, it kind of gets blended into the rest of it. These colors are up to you to change. You can use whatever color you want. And so moving on for the transmission or the glass, the transparency, I have kind of the same setup. I have a noise texture that's plugged into a color ramp. And again, it's the same idea. Whatever is black is opaque and whatever is white is more transparent, more glass like. So if I press shift control left click here, you'll see how it's affecting these areas. And it's mostly transparent, but not quite. The, the subsurface scattering is playing a part into how much into the object you can see and how much you can't. So if I go ahead and bring this back to normal, if I was to change this to black, you'll see what I mean here. This is now completely opaque. And then if I change this to white, now we have a glass like orb and you can see all the details that are going on inside the orb. And so to get these striations that you see running along the object, I have a wave texture over here that's uh, going into a Verona texture. And then that's being controlled by a color ramp. So the color ramp is being plugged into the height of a displacement node. And then we're going to go ahead and plug that into our material output here on displacement. One thing to note, if you do not know this, uh, depending on how new you are to Blender, if you go to your materials, make sure if you scroll down to settings, right here under surface, you'll find an option for displacement. Usually displacement is set to bump only. And if we want to see how the displacement is affecting the object in real time while we're rendering, you want to have this as displacement and bump, just in case you have bump nodes in there as well. So going back to the displacement, what's controlling the, uh, the waves is the scale. So if I change the scale to something like eight, we get a lot more waves. 4.8 is where I landed at. It can be something different for you. You may not even want these striations as they are. You can also plug in the wave texture directly into the color ramp. And maybe you like a sand duny type look for this. Again, it's totally up to you to make this your own. These are just the settings uh, that worked for me and what I ended up liking. You can change the scale here as well for the Verona texture. If I change this to four. You'll see how it starts to give you the kind of those micro striations in between the larger bands. Two is where I liked mine. And that's basically an overview on as to how I got to this effect, how I was able to achieve this. One other thing that you can do is you can go right up here and I have this set up kind of the same way as the uh, displacement. So we have a wave texture uh, plugged into a Verona texture that's plugging into a color ramp that has four different colors. If I go ahead and plug this into the base color, 
now we have actual licorice candy. I thought this looked pretty cool. So you'll also notice that I don't have uh, texture mapping nodes and that's because I'm keeping this procedural more or less by default blender uses the generated texture coordinates if you don't have anything plugged in it's using the generated coordinates and that's how I'm getting these bands to flow with the object if I go ahead and press Control T here to complete the node tree we can see that this is uh, the texture coordinate is set to generated connecting into the vector of the mapping node if I set this to normal it completely changes my mapping. Same thing with UV. Same thing with object. And so on. And to take this a step further, one thing we can do if we wanted to add some color variation to the overall effect, we can go ahead and add in a hue and saturation node. And now we can try something like 0.4 for the hue value, or maybe 0.7. We can mess around with this all day if we'd like. We can animate this value if we wanted it to shift hues. Another thing we can do is if we wanted to switch between the original look and this colorful look, we can add in a mix color node. So if you control and right click and drag over a node connection, it'll disconnect it. And now we're gonna go ahead and add in our mix color node drag in our base color so left click and hold down drag in that base color into the B slot of your mix color node and then we can just simply connect our hue and saturation value into the A slot of the mix color node and then we'll connect this up to our base color and now if we move the factor from 0 to 1 we can switch between both modes of color if you animate this correctly you can achieve some pretty cool effects with this and that'll wrap this video up I will be leaving a screenshot down below of the entire node setup so you can copy it and use it for your own projects. With that, if you like this video, please leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. If you have any questions or comments, or even better, any suggestions for new tutorials, please leave those down below. I will be starting a Patreon soon where I'll be providing material packs, kit bash kits, and my full blender scenes for my projects. So look out for that, stay tuned, and like always, on to the next one. Thank you.